Hello. Hi. In this ADF video, I'm going to show you how to create multiple files for multiple tables available in the Azure SQL database. So what I have done, I have a Azure SQL DB wherein I have three tables, customer, sales, and table name. Table name will be used to fetch the table names of these two tables. And in the local machine, I have created a folder wherein I want to create tables for these two tables, not for the table name, but for the customer and the sales. So for that, first thing what we need to do is we need to create link servers. In the link services, I have created my computer file system and we need to install this integration runtime so that we can use it and you have to provide a user written password for creation uh, for establishing a connection to the local folder in the computer and i have created a connection to the sql db where these tables exist now once you create a link services we'll go to creation of the data sets in the data set creation I'll create a data set called file system. So I'll select a delimited text. File system. And the link services that I'm using is the my computer file system. And I will make first as a header and then click OK. So another one is Azure SQL Source. Okay, I can connect to this Azure SQL database. Link service is this one. And then I'm not gonna select anything over here click okay uh, since i have a source connection already I, I have not selected that so now once the data set is created let's go to the creation of the pipeline so in the pipeline creation first what we do we do a copy data activity mention Copy data from Azure to file system. Okay, I have, I'll take the same name and use it here. So in the source, I'm gonna select Azure SQL source in the sync. I'm going to select the file system. Okay, that's it. So I'll just go to Azure SQL source here. A data set. Okay, In the Azure SQL source, I will make, I will create a parameter. I'll create a parameter table name and store a default value as NA. Okay. Here I want to make use of the table name add the dynamic dynamic content for the table name. So what I will do is select data set table name even for the file system I'll create a parameter 
table name and and here in the file add dynamic content what i'm going to do i'm going to concat why i'm using concat i'm just concatenating dot csv to the table name And click OK. Okay, now we have dynamically created two data set names in the pipeline. Let me close. Let me save and close everything. Yeah, I will use uh, here. I will make use of the lookup activity. In the lookup activity, I'll get the table names. Source data set will be Azure SQL source. And then select star from. I'm going to use this table, TBL table name, which shows the table information. In the first row. Okay, in the copy data set, the source for the value. I'll add a dynamic content. What I'm going to use first row. I will use the output of lookup dot first row dot name the source for dynamically creating it in the sync. Again, the same thing. First row dot name. So what we did, we created two link services, created two data sets with the parameter and output of lookup will be passed as a parameter value to these parameters used in the sync and the source. Now it should create, let's run it. In the source, I don't have any files available. So when I run this, it should create a new file. It's trying to get the table name. So let's see. So in the output, it got tbl.sales as a table name. Since we we told only first row, it select only the first row, and then it got six rows, and it created a file and loaded the six rows in the destination in the file system. Let's go and check. Look at the time, ten to a.m. ten to a.m. So now, what we have done, we have created file for only the. one table so if at all if there are multiple tables what we can do how we can do what we will do we will do one thing we have man, uh, many ways we will do this way now i will copy paste it copy paste this activity and create a connection in the sequence so first let's start from here the output of the lookup is only first row now we'll generate multiple rows and in the copy activity the first copy activity in the first copy activity here in the dynamic thing instead of first row 
I will say value zero. Even in the sink, instead of first row, I will say value zero. So in the second copy activity, I will rename it to copy, remove this and rename it to two. So here I will mention instead of first row, it is value of one. The sequence starts from zero. Here, instead of first row, I will say value of one. Click OK. So now this table will fetch two rows because this table got two rows. I can preview the data. Okay. And it will load the data. It will now we can. It should ideally create when I run, it should ideally create two files in this shared location. Let me run it. It's taking a bit of time. Let it take. So, yes, it created three rows. It should ideally create table files for table sales and table customer, and table name is not there. So, it created files for table sales, table customer. Ideally, here, if you could observe the shared location. I have two files. So now, how about the third one? So let's say, if I go to author, the pipeline, so if I add another copy activity, it should create should create for another file as well. Let's check the <laughs> so if I remove value one and keep value two here also if I remove value one and keep value two. Now, ideally, it should create three files. Okay, I will go to shared location and remove these files. Run it. Should create three files. I think first file is created. Yeah, it created three files as I told you. That is it. If you could see here in the source, it is getting three tables. So it created three files. That is all for the video, guys. I'll stop recording.